Welcome back, I'm Laura Hoffman. And I'm Kyle Bloyd. Identity theft is an ongoing threat in today's society. But what measures can you take to protect yourself from becoming a victim? Here's Fast Track reporter Kate Vanneman with some need-to-know tips. $1,500 for a leather bustier? I didn't care. We've all seen the commercials, but how exactly do you protect yourself from identity theft? I would say two things. First of all, don't, don't volunteer your information. Don't put it in places that it doesn't need to be. And secondly, be very careful about getting attracted in the cyber world. The FTC estimates 9 million Americans fall victim to identity theft each year. As the economy tightens and my need for money gets greater, I might be willing, as a criminal, to do more things to find out more information. How can you minimize your risk? Here are some tricks of the trade to keep in mind when it comes to protecting your identity. Don't sign the back of your credit card. Instead, write Check ID. This prevents someone from obtaining the resources to forge your signature. Always shred your credit cards. This prevents any part of the card to be copied, such as your name and or account number. When making online transactions, don't just click here. Always double check that the site is credible and secure. If you aren't sure, don't click. And monitor your credit card bills and credit reports. All citizens are allowed three free credit reports each year. The information can be found on Purdue's secure website. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to be a little bit more resilient because there's so many other targets. Reporting for Fast Track, I'm Kate Vanneman. Researchers at Purdue have mastered a new ground penetrating scanner. Erica Mills has the story. Over the past six months, Purdue has acquired one of the most advanced laser scanners of our time. I sat down with Professor Jay Shen and he explained exactly what the scanner does. Well, usually you use a camera to take a picture and this is a two-dimensional image uh, for the target or for the object. But this time, you use a special technique uh, which shoots a lot of laser um, pulses so that you can get a 3D picture. Basically, the scanner reproduces three-dimensional objects and sends the image to a computer screen. It can be used to build 3D models and even in professions like construction, archaeology, forensic science, and even transportation. Although Purdue is not the first organization to obtain this scanner, Purdue officials are very excited about its use here at Purdue and in the future. We think this is a very powerful uh, tool and we would like to promote this technology. And I should say this technology has been the most successful since the past uh, 20 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is Erica Mills reporting for Fast Track. President Obama is taking aim at costly U.S. defense contracts. Let's join Mike Westervelt for this week's political commentary. Mr. Obama is ordering a crackdown on what he calls spending plagued by massive cost overruns and outright fraud. This comes after the Government Accountability Office examined 95 major defense contracts and discovered some $295 billion in cost overruns. Reforms would stop unnecessary no-bid contracts, and Obama estimates it could save more than $40 billion in taxpayer money annually. Also this week, Republicans are continuing to come down on the president for his $3.5 trillion budget for 2010. The right side of the aisle is criticizing Obama for spending too much in a recession. Obama counters that with New Deal logic. A massive budget is needed to fix a massive problem, he argues. The Democrats are not expected to be as open to a compromise as they were with the stimulus package. Now out to California, where San Francisco Mayor Gavin Newsom is taking Proposition 8 to the state's highest court. That amendment to the state's constitution bans same-sex marriage and potentially disbars thousands of legally married couples. Newsom says although some may be uncomfortable with the idea of gay marriage, it's time to get used to it. He likens the struggle of gays to achieve equality as similar to that of African Americans. And on a final and lighter note, the country's first daughters, Sasha and Malia Obama, were reportedly squealing with delight this week. They came home to a brand new swing set. The girls played for nearly an hour in chilly weather. The Cedar and North American Redwood set has four swings, a slide, a fort, and ropes. There's even a picnic table with the names of all 44 presidents. At your Week in Politics, I'm Mike Westervelt. The Purdue Greek community recently came together to prepare for Greek Week coming up in April. Greek Street marked the first event. Erica Mills has more. On Wednesday, the Purdue Greek Councils came together for Greek Street. 
Greek Streak was a one-mile race among each organization. At three different checkpoints throughout the race, each racer will remove one article of clothing. Greek Streak is a fundraiser for the Boys and Girls Club of Lafayette, Indiana. We have every fraternity and sorority, almost every fraternity and sorority represented. And three checkpoints are taking off clothing, so they can't be naked, but there's people out here showing a lot of skin today. The event was a huge success. There were over 50 racers between both the men's and the women's race. This is Erica Mills reporting for Fast Track. After the break, we'll join our sports team with all the Purdue updates. And take a peek at the national weather update. Stay with us. Need help with that essay or resume? Then head over to the Purdue Writing Lab. They can help you with everything from properly citing your sources to grammar and spelling. On Monday nights from 7 to 10, get help at Hicks Library. And on Wednesday nights at Meredith Hall from 7 to 10. Monday through Friday, you can visit Hevlon throughout the day. Remember, you can always get help 24-7 with just about anything you can put on paper online with Al.